we love our veggie patch. It's only small because we just stick to growing the things that we use the most. But I have decided it's time to make it a wee bit more user friendly. So I'm going to build a big raised garden bed with a couple of levels in it. First it's clear out and measure up. I'll save that irrigation pipe to relay in the new beds. I'll just connect into it and run it under and up the inside of the wall. To build my bed I'm going to use these three metre long Sienna Microshade sleepers. Now they're not treated with any nasty chemicals so that means they're perfect for growing food plants in. And the reason I'm using three metres is the fact that my veggie garden is going to be three metres long by one metre wide. And that means I won't have any wastage through unneeded offcuts. This centre post will be one metre above ground. Now to make life simple I'm going to put it in first. But before I do that I need to get the post hole sorted out. As it's a non-structural post the hole only needs to be around three to four hundred millimetres deep. The structure isn't really retaining anything so the posts are just serving to stabilise and to tie things together. I'm using a bit of sleeper as a temporary spacer to get the position right relative to our deck. It'll also serve as a brace as my post fix sets. I find putting the centre in first makes it easier to get the other posts in line. To hold my posts in place I'm going to use something a little bit different. This stuff's called Sika Post Fix. Now it's an expanding product that's intended for non-structural situations. So it's ideal for what I'm doing here. Believe it or not, this tiny little bag does the work of over 50 kilos of pre-mixed bag concrete. You just rub it over a hard edge to break the internal seals and mix, cut carefully open, and then just pour and stand back. The post fix is set in a few minutes and completely hardened in a couple of hours. It's a very stable product so it has no chemical impact on the surrounding soil. If it overflows beyond your hole you can just trim it off easily with a handsaw. Next post. I like using a long level clamped off to my fixed post. You can use this to set your height and you know your posts will be in line straight and flush. Time to drop the face sleepers in. It's important to always get the bottom sleeper positioned at the right height and make sure it's level. This keeps everything running smoothly. Well that's the front wall finished. Now I've put all the screws in from the back because this is non-structural so they'll hold well and truly in this situation. Of course I now need to finish the other three sides to box it all in. I could spend heaps of time measuring up and checking diagonals and setting out but I'm going to do it the easy way now to find my next post holes. I measure and cut a piece of sleeper to size for the side panel, position it and then fix it in place. This gives me the exact location for my next corner post. So dig dig, next post in place, cut and fix the remaining end panels, then repeat for the other end before completing the other long side. At this stage it's important to leave one end open. Just add the bottom panel. Now if you've been paying attention you're probably starting to wonder why I keep describing this as non-structural because it's uh, beginning to look pretty darn structural. And you're also probably starting to think that is going to take a lot of soil to fill it up. Well the fact is that what I'm building here is a giant planter box. The soil will only be around 300 millimetres deep. To achieve this I fix sleeper rails to the side walls and internal posts and then cut plates to size to span across. The plates are screwed off to the rails. Screws temporarily position between each plate to create drainage spacing. Then add the internal end panels for the top bed and repeat the rails and the plates for there before adding the final external end plates. That's it then, major construction done. Before adding soil it's important to lay drainage fabric to prevent the soil washing through the drainage gaps. Just staple it in place. You know it's nearly over when it comes to soil time. If you buy your mix from a local landscape supplier like we did, explain to them that it's going to be used in a raised bed and for veggies. Ask them to put a little bit of extra sand through if they don't already. This way the bed will have really good drainage and it also helps to reduce the mix shrinking over time. I connected my irrigation up and added a lattice of drip line. To save water and time it's controlled by a basic water computer which turns on and off on set days. To get a head start on my growing I used super advanced veggies and herbs. You're harvesting virtually straight away. Just lay them out first to check spacing before digging in. One final build thing. I want a seat. So a couple of sleepers. I've ripped one down to 100 millimetres wide so my total seat depth is 300 millimetres. Clamp them together, cut up a couple of cleat blocks and then glue and screw them to hold them together. Then a rail on the side of the bed around 400 millimetres above ground level. Glue and screw that in place. Position the seat on top, glue and screw, cut two 90 degree support braces to size for underneath before cladding the whole thing with decking. Then finally a coat of water based timber treatment. And there it is. That wasn't so difficult was it? 
I made this bed three meters long by one meter deep and at this end it's 800 millimeters high at that end it's one meter tall now if you're going to build this you can adjust it to create the size that suits your needs but just one warning if you're only going to be able to access your bed from one side you don't want it any deeper than what you can comfortably reach across easy to build easy to use tailor it in size for just about any location and best of all loads of delicious nutritious homegrown herbs and veggies <laughs>